The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. that God has a plan, that God has a purpose, that God has an assignment for our lives. Before we were ever born, God had a plan for you. Not just the preacher, not just people we see all around us and we say, boy, God really has his hand on that guy or that lady or that person or that individual. You. I'm talking to you. This message is to you. God really does have a plan for your life. If you're still here, he's not through with you. Everything, here, here's, here's, here's some things that, that, that we are talking about. It. How do you find that plan? How do you discover that assignment? Everything God has made was created to solve a problem. Satan solves a problem God wanted to be chose, and he solves that problem. Eyes solve the problem of seeing. Ears solve the problem of hearing. Feet solve the problem of going to places. Your assignment is connected with problem solving. A dentist solves a teeth problem. A, 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 a doctor solves physical problems. A lawyer solves legal problems. A rock and roll or athletic person solves an entertainment problem. Everything in the world that you see, if people are successful at it, it's because they learn how to solve problems for people. And the bigger problem solver you become, the bigger your rewards in life become. You are a reward to somebody. Moses was a reward to the Israelites. Joseph was a reward to Pharaoh. And you are a walking reward for somebody. Somebody needs you. You are exactly what somebody needs right now. Not everybody needs Jensen Franklin right now, but somebody needs what I'm sharing right now. And so I don't have to try to fit everybody, but if I can find the people that I'm assigned to and they can find me, great things can happen. You are genetically perfect. Somebody needs exactly what you are. They don't need another you. They don't need somebody else. They need you. There's no other you. God doesn't run a Xerox machine. He made you just like he made you because he needed you to solve problems that nobody else can solve. Your assignment is, is not a decision, it's a discovery. You don't decide your assignment, you discover it. The, cre the creation decides nothing, it only discovers. The product does not decide what it's going to be, the manufacturer does. It's not about what you do, it's about what you are. See, a, a painter doesn't decide to start painting. No, he was a painter. The talent was in him. A singer doesn't start, doesn't decide to be a singer because I know a lot of you have decided to try to be singers and sometimes you sit behind me and you can't sing. You'll never, I don't care how you decide. No, no, nothing on anybody down there tonight. I, honestly, I wasn't listening to you, but if the, if the shoe fits, find your assignment. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm kidding. I am kidding, I'm totally kidding. But how many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, if you're a public speaker, you don't decide it, you discover it. If you're, if you're a business person, you don't decide it, you just got it. Now, you have to develop it, you have to sharpen the skills, you have to get training, you have to get all the education you can get. But the bottom line is, there are people, you, you don't decide it, all you got to do is discover it. And, and it's not what you want to do is what you are what are you and then you begin to build on that most people never discover their assignment sadly 
70% in a recent poll of people surveyed said they hate their job. 70%. That's why they pole vote to the door to get out at 501. You can predict a person's future if they know what their assignment is. If a mother knows she's assigned to those babies, you can predict that those children are going to be great kids by the time that mother gets through with them because their mother knows their assignment. Anger is a clue to your assignment. Moses got mad when he saw the Egyptian beating the Israelite and it stirred up his assignment. Somebody, something is supposed to change and it stirs you up. Anger is the birthplace for change. Mothers against drunk driving. It's called mad. Some mother saw her son splattered on a highway killed by a drunk driver and started an organization called Mothers Against Drunk Driving and she found her assignment out of something that made her mad. What gets you upset? What stirs you up? What gets you going? Some problems I see I can easily walk away from and it's you know somebody else's problem, I don't care. And then there's things that stir me up. That's a clue that I'm supposed to get involved in that somehow. I, I think we need to know that what we love the most is a clue to our assignment. What do you love the most? What do you talk about the most? What, what kind of books do you like reading? What kind of interests? What, what things really get you excited? When you discover your assignment, it will reveal your enemies. When Nehemiah discovered his assignment to rebuild the wall, Sam Ballad and all of his enemies turned out. When Esther found her assignment, Haman showed up in her life. When Jesus discovered his assignment, the Pharisees came right on his heels. Every assignment has a birthplace. And you never know where the birthplace is. That's why you need a relationship with God because this night could be the birthplace of your assignment. I'm dead serious. The potential of a chosen place and a chosen people coming together in His name, your whole life can be altered in one moment's time. There are still some upper room experiences. There are still some Bethels like Jacob had where his whole life changed and the heavens opened up and he saw his assignment. God still has those places available. Your assignment will take you to places you were never intended to go. Now, I want you to listen to this point. There's a place, there's a people, there's a purpose for you. I, I, I wrote this down and I, I felt like the Lord gave it to me. The Lord said to tell you tonight, you have not been everywhere God's going to take you. So get ready for changes. Dramatic changes are coming. There are people, there are people whom you have not met that are about to come into your life. And the Lord says you're in transition. And my hand is on you. And your assignment will take you places you never intended to go. I never intended to pastor in Gainesville, Georgia. Never did it ever cross my mind. When God called me to preach, I never thought about Gainesville. When I preached for seven years before I came here all over the nation, it never crossed my mind one time. God's assignment will take you places that you never dreamed you would go. But boy, if you can find those key places, everything changes. And here's a big point. Your assignment may seem small at the moment, yet it can be the golden link to the great chain of miracles that will be released into your life. That's why the Scripture said in Zechariah, uh, despise not the day of small things, 
Well, I heard the Lord just kind of scream this in my spirit. He said, and he said it to me, and he's, and he's saying it to you. Don't minimize your assignment. Don't, because you compare yourself to other people who seem to be doing a whole lot more, don't you minimize your assignment. Don't you play down anything that God is doing in your life right now. Where you are right now, don't you play it down and don't you minimize it. God has you hearing this sermon this very moment, working the job that you're working. Boy, I feel this. He has his hand on your life, and, 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 and it grieves his spirit when you minimize where you are right now. Live, be where you are right now. Mm. Not when I get there, not one day, someday. Be where you are right now and live right now and enjoy the moment right now and be all you can be where God's put you right now. I think about the old uh, prophet. He said to his servant, go, go look, we're supposed to get some rain. Go tell me what you see. And he runs and he comes back and he says, I see nothing. He go again. I see nothing. Go again. I see nothing. I see nothing. I go seven times, and then he finally comes back, and he says, all I saw was a cloud the size of a man's hand. And the prophet Elisha said, oh, my God, pack the bags and run for your life. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. He, he did not despise the day of small things. Now, listen to me. It was little... That's a little cloud, but it's loaded. And some of you are in a season where what seems to be materializing in the dream is little, but the Lord told me to tell you it's little, but it's loaded. Your assignment may seem small. Take that little basket and put that little baby in that basket, Moses' mother. And release that baby, that little bitty baby, into the basket. And Pharaoh didn't, Pharaoh didn't respect, he, he, he broke Zechariah 4 scripture when, where it says, despise not the day of small beginnings, because he took Pharaoh into his palace. You remember his daughter took her, and he was not afraid. He didn't see it's little, but it's loaded. He didn't know that that Moses was going to topple his throne one day. It wasn't a threat because he's so small time, little bitty thing was little but it was loaded one day Moses would say let my people go and Pharaoh and all of his power and wealth would have to bow to that little baby and the power of his God and don't you don't you minimize the assignment that God has for your life stay in the center of your assignment oh this is so important when did David get in trouble when he should have been out leading his troops in the battle, but he stayed home when the kings went to war. And that's when he fell to adultery. Stay in the center of your calling. Unclutter your life. You know, Paul said, this one thing I do. He didn't say I dabble in 40 things. This one thing I do. Don't dabble in this and that. Stay focused on what God's called you to do. Your assignment may appear to be a total contradiction to your skills. Very important. Moses said, I can't talk. How am I going to be your messenger? Jeremiah said, I'm just a young child. How can I be a prophet? Timothy said, I'm just a youth. And Gideon said, I'm the least of my tribe. Your assignment will force your greatest gifts and talents to emerge. And it may require unusual study. You're never born qualified. You become qualified through your experiences. There are two ways you get wisdom. Two ways to get wisdom. Number one, through mistakes. Number two, through mentors. And God says, you choose. You're going to get some wisdom, 
But if you won't let me put any mentors in your life and people who've already lived longer than you, done more than you, they got more sense than you, they're smarter than you, they know the word more than you, they pray more than you, I want to put some mentors in your life and they can really save you a lot of pain and heartache. But if you don't want to get wisdom that way, then let's pull out behind curtain number B. <laughs> Mistakes. So who's your mentor? So, so, so who in your life do you look to? Who, what kind of, who are you listening to? You need mentors in your life. Your assignment may require unusual study. The Bible said study to show yourself approved. I, I, I played sax, but I, I wasn't born with that. I didn't just find a sax and beep, bop, boo, dee, bop, 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 bop. No. No. It required study. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and days and days and months and years of study. Your assignment will always, this is so good, your assignment will always cause somebody else to succeed. It's not about you. That's where we get it all messed up. It's not about you. It will help other people succeed. When you get in your assignment, it makes people look good all around you. David enabled Saul to kill Goliath. Joseph helped Pharaoh feed the world through seven years of famine. Elisha helped Elijah fulfill his prophecies. Somebody else succeeds because of your assignment. If your assignment, you think, is just all about you becoming some wealthy, healthy, beautiful, wonderful life, could care less about the rest of people, it's all about me and God, and God give me what I want, you will never get what you think you're going to get. And if you get it, you're going to be a miserable person. You will succeed when something becomes your obsession. Your, your assignment is your legacy. How will you be remembered by those around you? See, some of you, your assignment is prayer. We, we think it's just doing something big. I'm, that is big. One of the assignments on some, somebody's life may be, you know, being a prayer warrior, and that will be your legacy. Your assignment will be your legacy. Problems are the gate to significance. You'll be remembered for the problems you solve or the problems you create. Who will carry on your assignment? I'm almost through, but your assignment is geographical. This is so important. Your assignment is geographical. Jonah was in the wrong place. He was not where God told him to be, and that's why the whale swallowed him. Because God's assignment for your life is to a place. Go where you're assigned. Always be where you are. God can get you anywhere he wants in 24 hours. One day Ruth is out begging in a field. 24 hours later, she's riding around in a chariot limo being fanned by servants as Mrs. Boaz. She owns the field. She owns everything. 24 hours. Joseph is in prison with a striped suit. 24 hours later, he is second to the most powerful, richest man in the world. And he became so wealthy in 24 hours that he gave each of his brothers and his father their own ranch because he owned so much real estate. From a prison suit to a real estate magnet in 24 hours. David was tending sheep 24 hours later. He's in Saul's palace. Telling you that your assignment is to a place. Your assignment will take you where you will be celebrated, not just tolerated. <laughs> Jesus said, when you go into a city, and, 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 and you need to see if they're worthy of you. And if they don't, if they don't celebrate you, now don't, don't get crazy about it. But, but I mean, you know, if you just... He said, shake the dust off your feet and go find somewhere where you're celebrated. Not tolerate. You don't give a Rolls Royce to somebody who don't clean their car. Yeah. 
Listen, if God is not with you, last point, if God is not with you in that business deal, I'm, I mean, here's how I am. He has to push me through the door. Even if a door opens. This is what wisdom teaches you in gray hair. See, I used to look at stuff and say, now I look at it and say, how much maintenance will that take? How much of my life is that going to take away from me to do that? How many hours? What, what am I going to... It's not just the... I, I know we can do something with it, boom. But then there's the maintenance of it. <laughs> and so, if God is not with you, don't go. If God doesn't tell you to do it, don't do it. I mean, I, mean, I would put it, I'd make it hard on God and easy on me. That's how, that's how I am about decisions, big decisions. Okay, I've done everything I know to do. I've fasted, I've prayed, I've read your word, I've looked, I've kept my ears open, I've done everything, I've prayed, I've asked elders, I've asked uh, counsel, I've done everything I need to do. Now, if you don't push me through the door, if you don't do something, I'm making it hard on you and easy on me. Because I know I'll do what you want me to do, but i got to know it's you. I've got to know it's you. So you've got, you've got to so impress me. You made me. You know how to speak to me. When, when the Lord uh, told, t told me some months back, year, well, it's been years now, I was questioning him on, a, on our 21-day on our fast. I said, Lord, why are we on TV? I know you put us there, and I know you blessed it, and I thank you for it, but I, why? And the Lord said two reasons. I'll never forget it. He said, you are to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then you are to take the other resources, all of them, not any of the resources are to be used for any other reason, no salaries, nothing comes out of it. Take all of the other resources and help the helpless. And when we started doing that, God started blessing us in ways that we never dreamed. And you know all the things we've been doing. I don't have to list them. And one of the things that we're going to do as part of our assignment is we're going to, we've already got it arranged. We're partnering with a fabulous ministry called God's Pit Crew. You can look them up, God's Pit Crew. This is a ministry that takes tractor trailer loads. We've already got five tractor trailer loads of, of food, diapers. Um, they take chainsaws. They take front loaders. They take uh, 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 food. They have a full kitchen that, can, that cooks three to three to 7,000, up to 10,000 meals, but normally three to 7,000 meals a day. And we are going to sponsor those five trucks to go into Moore, Oklahoma. They left today. <laughs> Jam-packed tractor trailer, 18-wheelers. They're going in with a mobile kitchen. They are going to be uh, one mile from ground zero. Right, the Red Cross, everybody, Samaritan's Purse, they all work hand in hand with this ministry, God's pit crew. And we have sent the first five trucks filled with tens of thousands of pounds of food and supplies and help and volunteers to go in and help them because that's what God's called us to do. That's our assignment, part of it. Anywhere people can't help themselves, we need to try to help them. Can we say amen? not seen any any worse anywhere uh, we've delivered six tractor trailer loads of product here so far to be distributed to the victims that's over a quarter of a million pounds of relief supplies to those who need it bottled water gatorade diapers you know foods paper products anything to help those folks
We've had teams here all week long cutting trees off of people's homes. We've got crews today putting a new roof on uh, for a family and uh, pressure washing the house, which sounds a little crazy, but it was just covered in mud, and, and uh, that helps this family get a little bit back to normal. And a huge crew uh, here working in one of the local parks to try to help get it cleaned up and leave a bright spot in this community. All of a sudden I hear the rumbling and I thought, oh God, you know, so I grabbed my dog and we hit the closet and put pillows over my head and I could hear the rumbling real good and popping and it just sounded like about 30 trains going overhead. It's just, I've never, I've, we've had tornadoes here before, but not this close. It's amazing. I'm just blessed and thankful. I can't express how thankful I am. I'm just really blessed to have people that care enough to help people. That when you show up uh, representing the Lord and Savior that we serve and help people who who have cannot figure out why you would do this, why would you travel 1,200 miles to help me? You know, it's because God loves you and we love you, and it's what we're called to do. What does it mean for God's pit crew, for Randy Johnson and the team, that Free Chapel, Pastor Frank, and Kingdom Connection would partner? Um, I don't think I have words for that. It's huge for us. Um, we just feel so blessed that that uh, that we're we're even able to partner. So uh, it's it's such a great blessing to us. The resources that that can be brought to help us continue to help others is powerful and big. Thank you, Connection Partners, for what you're already doing to make this possible. Would you consider a one-time gift for the people of Moore, Oklahoma? so we can continue this amazing work of love. You can be the hands and feet of Jesus in a very real way. Call now or go online to be part of this miracle. Thank you. Coming to the Gwinnett Arena in Atlanta, June 27th through the 29th, Board Conference with Jensen Franklin, Phil Dooley, Rich Wilkerson Jr., Carl Lentz, Reggie Dabbs, and music from Lecrae, Hillsong London, Lincoln Brewster, Israel Hope, and the Free Chapel Band. Register now at forwardconference.org. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Ministries. For more information on the ministry and resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.org.